the Maple Leafs, interesting lines coming out of practice, and Sheldon Keefe did confirm that they will dress 11-7 and seven tomorrow. They have Tavares on kind of a third line with Bunting. Yeah. Bunting's not on the top line again, even though he had a good game against the Devils. Uh, Luke Shen's still in Vancouver, so Gustafson's there. But, um, oh, and we're showing the lines now on, on TSN 4. Yeah. They're, they're keeping the Lafferty, Yarncroak, Nylander line together because I guess they, you know, Sheldon Keefe liked what he saw against the Devils. But yeah, break. It, it comes back down to like, oh, how do you, how would you feel as a forward going with eleven and seven? I love it as a forward because if you're a top end guy, it really doesn't uh, affect your game plan whatsoever. But I, uh, I don't even know if that's for real. I mean, put William Nylander back with Michael Bunting and John Tavares, or put Bunting back with Matthews and Marner. And I don't know why that looks like that, because the bottom six guys, you're just basically mixing and max, uh, mi mixing and matching and looking for some kind of third line to go out there. And then you just don't offend the other two guys and, and give them some spot duty. So I, I love the way they're, that they're creative and Sheldon can look at some different options for different scenarios. But sometimes it's like right in front of you and you can't mm -hmm. overthink it where it's like, Get Bunting back with Matthews. He proved to you last game that you gave him a little pee-pee whack, and then it's like he's he, he did his thing and said, put me back on the top line. Yeah, I still think they're they're worried about Michael Bunting. Oh, dog, I think they feel they need to send him a message and maybe more than a little pee-pee whack for a game because if you think about guys that can kind of ruin a game for you in a big game and make a bad decision that puts you behind the eight ball in a big game. I think Michael Bunting's proven he could be that guy, right? Uh, like maybe one too many times this season in terms of undisciplined penalties. And, and I, I get it fast, Chuck, but it just seems like for some of the forwards and some of the key guys that, and we've talked about his, his obsession with the refs and yelling at the refs yes. and how he has to channel his intensity into the opponent and just have hockey intensity instead of the nonsense of yelling at the refs. But for a guy, for a team that just doesn't have a lot of like sandpaper like that and a lot of extra effort guys, it seems like for the most part, he works his ass off every night. Oh yeah. And it's like, if you want to pick and choose who you're giving the little whack to, it's always seems to be him. So I, I, everyone's got to be accountable, but it's like, you proved your point. You put him on the fourth line now we scored a goal. Maybe put him back at the top line and say, go do your thing. And if you do it one more time, it's going to take you five games to get back there. I don't know. Well, and you were mentioning these kind of benchmark games that teams have. And, and for the Leafs, you know, anytime that McDavid's in town, it's a big deal. Given how you lost, you know, in Edmonton and the way that you lost. And, and oh, you brought it up. It doesn't take Sheldon Keefe to say something. It's going to take a veteran. But Michael Bunting, maybe not – vocally is going to be the leader in the room, but on the ice, he's going to have a say in this game. I totally agree with that. It's just, I, I don't know. Just as far as bunting goes, it seems like, I don't know. He's, I, I like the kid for some reason. Yeah. There's just something about him. I like, I like him for some reason. And I think he works hard and he provides a lot on that top line. And it seems like they always want to go to him. And he's kind of their whipping boy. I'm not sure. Yeah, look, I don't, I don't disagree with you, Doug. I think ultimately, you know, when push comes to shove, if we're talking about an important game, a decisive game in the first round, you know, it's hard to imagine it's not going to be Matthews, Martyr, and Bunting. It's hard to imagine it's going to be Alex Kerfoot up there on the first line. But, you know, stranger things have happened. But I, I, I want to – the thing that intrigues me about this deployment of 11-7 and seven is how do you feel if you're Justin Hall, defenseman number seven right now? Like yeah. th this is this is a moment. This is a moment where Justin Hall's got to be wondering: Am I going to be a factor when it comes to these big games that we're talking about in the playoffs? That's a competition I don't mind, Fest Chuck. It's like you you want to talk about guys that should be working their rear ends off to get a spot in that lineup. You've got it right now. You've got. They always toss out internal competitions, and a lot of times it's nonsense because of contracts and where guys are slotted. You're just not beating a guy out of a spot. But right now. You have a chance to beat a guy out of a spot and show how how badly you want to play in the ta against the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round, with what you're going to do here in the last ten or fifteen games. Yeah, yeah, well said.